Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing TV. I'm Peter Switzer and for today's show, I'm going to get to Shore and Partners Adam Dawes' take on the importance of China's decision to make a double barrel blasting of monetary and fiscal policy stimuli to kick up that Chinese economy. Now, last week, we saw the likes of BHP spike over 15%, and the same applied to Rio and Fortescue. We also saw S32 and lithium stocks benefit from this Chinese stimuli. So let's just see if this positivity is expected to be sustained and how we should play the market going forward. Mate, thanks for joining us. It's great to be here, Peter. Thanks so much. Okay, let's not muck around. We can do pleasantries any, any time of the week. What's Shaw and Partners' view on the importance of this Chinese stimuli? Yeah, look, it's pretty amazing. And there's been lots of uh, Chinese cheer. There's been bazooka, Chinese bazooka. And that's pretty much what it is. The government definitely announced a, a range of broad measures aimed, aimed at stimulating the faltering economy, the property sector and the stock market. So basically, there's about four things that they did. They reserve requirements for basically freeing up 142 billion US dollars to create liquidity for new lending, short term rate cuts, support for housing and funding for stock purchases. Peter, I'd love this for a client, but the central bank is going to provide $71 billion in funding to into, into institutions to do buybacks going forward. Look, that's probably going to do quite well. That's obviously this latest stimulus translates into meaningful improvements, obviously, with their underlying economy. And it will augur very positively for our resource stocks. And I think we'll look back on this in six months' time and see this was the turning point for our resource stocks on the Australian Stock Exchange. Yeah. And in many ways, China is the second biggest economy in the world. It's important for the whole global economy. And as you know, mate, I'm overseas. I'm actually broadcasting this from Dubrovnik in Croatia. I know right. it's, a, it's a tough gig, but someone else has to do it. Um, <laughs> and, and one of the headlines I saw, you know, from European stock markets on uh, Friday was like the the high end brands like LVMH and all those sorts of companies that benefit when Chinese start spending. That all their stock prices were up. So I, I think this is going to be a real shot in the arm for the global economy as well. Mm, yeah, agree. And we can already see that in most of our resource stocks getting off the off the canvas. And starting mm -hmm. to move a lot higher. Okay, this is one thing I want to go with. As I say, BHP was up about fifteen percent on Friday. I think it's up about two point three percent today. And, and and I'm looking at the analyst view, but the analyst view uh, that we're looking at, and for example, I think BHP, according to the analyst consensus, would be down about minus point three percent in the future. Mm -hmm. But all of their views would not have been predicated on this Chinese new news. Yeah, absolutely. This has all sort of come out in the last coming couple of days. And even our analysts are sort of scrambling to put these into the models to then start to, to look at what's happening with the resources sector. And I definitely think that we've been seeing a bit of a rotation out of the banks and into the resource sector as well. And that's certainly improved. Commodity prices have definitely improved, especially iron ore. The outlook for that has definitely improved. Getting over $100 has been really, really important. Uh, Chinese, um, uh, sorry, not Chinese, uh, copper is also uh, looking very, very good near that $10,000 mark again. That's bode well for something like a Samphire, which is doing very well at the moment. Yeah, and that's the question I was going to ask you. I think the analyst view last week was basically minus 14%. But if China's in there buying copper, Samphire should be a beneficiary. And so basically, just to, to summarise what we've said so far, you're a, a believer that our mining um, stocks, which have been beaten up, like, you know, BHP was, what, $50 at the beginning of the year and got down yeah. as low as, what, 37 38, so. 36, yeah, yeah 38, yep. So, yeah, so, so you feel that there's more upside for these miners over the next six months or so? Yeah, definitely. I mean, something like a Samphire is going into that top 100 as well. You get a lot of that index buying, you get a lot of that tailwind of that kind of stuff happening as well. But certainly for our large commodity stocks, yeah, absolutely. You see Rio on a parabolic rise up. It looks like everyone's been caught short-footed on this one. Uh, and also, it's great to see some of the shorts starting to come out of the lithium sector as well. Yeah. But look, overall portfolios, we're actively managing clients' positions uh, in the copper space, Samphire or 
more wire. Uh, the gold space evolution is looking really good. Oil and gas is definitely Woodside. Uh, lithium, we like sort of the PLS and and yeah, the, the names still go on. So yeah, I, I'm confident that this rally can continue from here. All right. Also, did you notice that Goldman Sachs in the US named Rio as one of the, the, the no, actually it was Barclays in London uh, right. nominated Rio as a, as one of their best buys out of their top five buys. So that's going to be yeah. good for the share price. Mate, let's go yeah. to lithium quickly. Um, we've seen LTR up about 27%. Oh, no, the, the view on uh, LTR from analysts is up 27%. But once yeah. again, that was before the Chinese um, situation. So yeah. uh, is your feeling that this is going to be the start of the turning point for lithium? Look, I hope so. I mean, look, you can even, we even looked at the shorts on PLS and they're down below 20%. So like, oh. you know, this this is potentially starting to move. But look, you know, we there is there has been some supply that's come out. Uh, some of their Chinese uh, China lithium stocks or, or, or mines had been shuttered, so that's taken some supply out. I think Africa is still putting a lot of supply into the market, so we need to be careful about that. But look, overall, I think this lithium price and market can still sustain. It is going to be a longer uh, slog for it. But I'd be still comfortable to be picking up some lithium, PLS, and uh, well, LTR and uh, CXO, they're going to be laggers to that. You're going to see the big boys move. So that's going to be uh, IGO, PLS, those kinds of things, LTM, Acadia. They're the ones that will move first. And then you'll get these smaller ones that will get dragged up with it. So I'm hoping that this continues on. Yes. Okay. Let's quickly go to small caps. Is there a fight? Look, we always know that when interest rates start coming down, and and look, there are there are people arguing that our first rate cut might be December rather than February, but of course that's a debate that ultimately yeah. um, economic data will determine. But mate, what's your your favourite small cap stock at the moment that's going to look like a beneficiary of this rotation that's starting to happen right now? Yeah, so there's there's a couple in there. I mean, I, I've always talked about 3DA, which is a Mero. That's a, quite a nice little small cap that's just ticking over 40 cents at the moment. That looks pretty good. The old drone shields ticking up nearly nearly a dollar forty at the moment. So that did it. We did a placement at dollar fifteen. Um, I still like Newix. That's in the AI space. Again, it's not such a small cap anymore, but those kinds of things are moving on. Uh, look, you know, I think you can. Yeah, the, even the VAS, which is the Vanguard Australian Index, it's the top three hundred. I think you, you know, yeah. if you're a conservative buyer. That gets you the, you know, obviously the top ends of the stocks, but also gets those small cap stocks in there uh, that should do well. So there's lots of things that you can certainly look at. And you want to find those ones that are going to be small caps now, but in the future, they're going to be mid and to be large caps as well. And that's that's the key within yeah. small cap investing. Yeah. In the Sutra report today, mate, I actually wrote about VAS from the point of view that I like at the moment X20 because that gives me all the, the stocks from 21 down to 200. Correct. Yeah. That's, and that's just going to lose a little bit of gain because of the big caps being sold. But once mm -hmm. they once those like CBA and, and ANZ hit their their bottom, then those other ones from what uh, two hundred and one down to three hundred that will mm -hmm. that will really help Vass along. So I think between yeah. both those ETFs are pretty good uh, plays. Now, mate, quickly, um, yeah. the banks are selling off. Macquarie's not. But do do we need to have the guts to sell Macquarie because it's done so well for us? Can, do we have the guts to sell it, and will it come off the boil? Yeah, I mean, you could if you're a trader, you could definitely take some off the table here. I, I don't think that this is going to go back to one hundred and eighty dollars anytime soon. Remember that air trunk, uh, that profitability of that air trunk transaction is still there, and I think that's what the market's really looking for. I think you hold Macquarie. CBA is off about ten dollars from its highs. Look, you know, some of the banking stocks, we are seeing that rotation, um, but it's been happening for a long time now. So, yeah, I, I think if you're a trader, you could take a little bit off. For investors, keep holding it and keep buying Macquarie. I think it's a great business. Do we, do we stick with CSL or is it Tom Take Profit and CSL? Yeah, um, it says it's underperformed. If you actually look at the overall sort of last 12 months, it has underperformed. I think it's just part of a, a defensive healthcare portfolio. You can have CSL in there. Uh, but I, I'd be a little bit cautious about selling CSL. If if we started to see it really starting to kick on, potentially then you'd take some profits, but holding at the moment, definitely. One final one that you and I did get right. We liked ResMed when it was low in price. Yeah. Now about a plus 2% uh, rise. Now, what do you think about ResMed? Stick with it? 
Yeah, stick with it. I think, you know, there's more to come on ResMed. It's still it's still got this taint of this GLP-1 or a Zempic drug. I just don't think that's that's right for it. I think it's been unfairly treated. Uh, I'd be happy to hold ResMed and keep buying it. I think there's lots more to come. Yeah, I think the US analysts are, are pretty supportive of ResMed. And a lot of people are saying that the Zempic thing can, can work, but are people going to do it forever? And does it necessarily cure sleep apnea? That's another question mark as well, which ResMed really goes after. Yeah, I think um, I think I saw a thing the other day. Uh, Ozempic's taken off two percent of the global uh, population, and this is going to come out wrong. But fat, like two percent of the uh, of the population, have now slimmed down. It's only two percent. Like it's it's not a huge number, and there's still a lot of people out there that can't even afford it. So yeah, happy to buy yeah. Redmond. And also, I know skinny people like you and me probably get accused by our partners for snoring. So. It's not necessarily an obesity issue. I'm trying, Peter. You're definitely the skinny one out of both of us. So we'll be all right. All right, mate. Thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry we're all late with the link, but that's the life in the fast lane. Thanks very much. All good, mate. Take care. Pleasure. Yep. Yes, and that was Adam Dawes of Shore and Partners. Now, before I go, let me make a, a quick point. We are seeing a rotation. We are seeing the the, the top 20 stocks, uh, not the miners, but the top 20 stocks that have been doing really well, the likes of the four big banks, Wes Farmers and whatever. They've all done very well. Their share price got really high. A lot of the fund managers and the smarties are now taking profit, and they're going to chase the miners because of this China stimulus. Also, interest rates will come down. If it's not in December, it'll probably be February. When they come down, that will also help a lot of mid to small cap companies. And that's part of the reason why uh, someone like uh, uh, Adam Dawes was talking about VAS, that's the Vanguard Australian Shares ETF, and why I talked about X20, that's a beta shares ETF that gives you the stocks from uh, 21 down to, to 200. It takes the, the top um, 20 companies out of, that, out of that ETF. I, for my financial planning clients, I recommended X20, but then added the likes of BHP uh, and, uh, and Rio, because I do think, and this is before the Chinese uh, good news story, so a lot of my clients are very, very happy. I just think that's the, the sensible way of playing this. Stock picking can be really hard, but there are a lot of companies out there that really suffered when interest rates rose between you know, uh, 2022 and 2023. And so therefore, I think it's a good idea to have that diversified play, which can be either VAS or X20. Um, that's the, 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 the strategy I'm using at the moment. We will be uh, stock picking as well along the way. But from this point of view, with rotation likely to keep going, and rotation I mean by how those big cap companies really uh, did well over the last year or so into the, the smaller or mid cap companies that are likely to do well in the future. There's also a, a, an approach where you can take, we look for small cap fund managers. Those guys often will do very well when interest rates are coming down. That's a strategy worth thinking. Thanks for joining us. I'm uh, now going to say farewell from Dubrovnik and I'll talk to you next week. And don't forget, Boom, Doom and Zoom for Switzer subscribers, Switzer Report subscribers, that's on Thursday. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.